Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and praise. Thank you for this special day. The day that has been set aside to celebrate your faithfulness, your love, your mercy, your care. Lord, through the ones that you have used to serve in the Dickens ministry, some serve for eight years and one serve for four years. We appreciate you for the grace of service. This morning, I pray that your word will come to us expressly. You will bless our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, let's read the Passion Translation of Romans chapter 16 together. We'll read responsibly 1 to 16. Romans chapter 16. If you wouldn't mind, please rise up on your feet as we take this responsibly. I take the first one. You take the next one. Now, let me introduce to you our dear and beloved sister in the faith, Fuebe, a shining minister of the church in Sensharia. I ask that you shower her with your hospitality when she arrives. Embrace her with honor. been that for even me. Give my love to Prisca and Aquila, my partners in ministry, serving the anointed one Jesus. And risk their own life to save mine. I'm so thankful for them. And not just I, but all the congregations among the non-Jewish people. I spend them for their ministry. Also give my loving greetings to all the believers in their house church and greet Epenetus, who was the first convert to Christ in the Roman province of Asia, for I love him dearly. Make sure that my relatives, Adronicus and Junior, are honored, for they are my fellow captives who bear the distinctive mark of being outstanding and well-known apostles who were joined into the anointed one before me. In my regards, my pleasure, who my Lord is joined into the Lord. And give my loving greetings to Urbanus, our partner in ministry, serving the anointed one, and also to Stasius, whom I love, and found to be approved by the anointed one. And extend my greetings to all those of Aristobulus House Church. Give my love to my relative Herodion and also to all those of the house church of Narcissus for they too are joined into the Lord. And Typhosa for the women who have diligently served the Lord to persist who is much loved and faithful in her ministry. For the Lord, I send my greetings. And Rufus, for he is especially chosen by the Lord. And I greet his mother, who was like a mother to me. I cannot forget to mention my esteemed friends, as secretors, Legon, Hermes, Patrobas, Hermas, and all the brothers and sisters. Let's read the 15th verse together. Give my regards to Philegos, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and also Olympus, and all the holy believers who meet with them. Please take your seat. How many of you found that passage interesting to read? All right. Now I can see the choir. What's your name mentioned there? But let me tell you that God is still writing the history book. And there are names that are going into that history book. And you know, when you get there, you see what the angels will be doing. You know, today, we are gathered to appreciate the ministers whom the Lord have used. Four of them ministered 
through the Dickens ministry for eight years and one for four years. And today, the message I'm sharing with us is what I call saying thank you to those who serve. Saying thank you to those who serve. We live in a thankless generation. And people are becoming ungrateful and in the sign of ingratitude is everywhere. You find it in the home, you find it in the church, you find it in the society. You know, some people tend to take for granted the goodness of God extend to us from day to day through men and women that he has brought our way. And there are some of us here today that you can recall how you extended a kind of a kind gesture to someone and the person never regarded it as anything. And so we find this issue of thanklessness even in the home sometimes children may take it for granted that their parents are meant to pay their school fees. And even when school fees are paid, how many children go back to tell their parents thank you? And for wives, housewives, you know, some have taken it for granted that uh, no matter what happens, the man will bring out money and the woman will go to the market. And sometimes the money is collected and there is no thank you. You know that parents too sending your children on errand and you just believe that it's your right to send them on errand. And when they go on errand for you, uh, some parents tend to just take that to be like, well, that's their duty without saying thank you. And you know, we have different shades of thanklessness in the home. And also it has crept to the church that even in the church, there are some who, whatever anyone does, is taken for granted. For example, uh, when you have the king who is serving us, we just take it for granted. When he's doing his assignment, without turning back to say, well, thank you, Deacon, thank you, Dickness. Or maybe for those who are serving in one ministry or another, you know, do we take time to appreciate them, to say thank you to them. Uh, you know, even the preacher that is preaching to you. <laughs> I said, well, well, his assignment is to preach. <laughs> what else is he to do? <laughs> we pay him to preach. And so there's no need to say thank you. <laughs> and you know, in the society, have you ever come across, you know, maybe giving someone who is not the right of way but then you have the right of way and because the other person seems to be in a hurry and then you allow the person to pass in Nigeria how many turn around to say thank you and sometimes they just think they are very smart you know some fail to say thank you because they ignore what has been done and focus on what they think should be done. So what is thank you? Thank you is acknowledging and appreciating the kind gesture or the good thing that is done for you. It is to give respect and recognition to others in three ways. Number one, through your attitude. Number two, through your actions. Number three, through your words. You need to have an attitude of thank you. And you need to put an action to that attitude. And you also need to verbalize it. You say, well, thank you. At this service, we are gathered to say thank you to you. Thank you to you, thank you to you, and thank you to you. Thank you. What should we thank them for? You know, because of time, I'll just share briefly with you 
five things we need to thank them for. The first one is to thank them for their calling. There are different kinds of calling in the kingdom of God. Some are called to serve on the front line. And some are called to serve behind as supporters, as helpers, as people that many times what they do is behind the scene. You know, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 tells us that to some he gave apostles, to some he gave, you know, prophets, to some made them to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. But that's not all in the church. There are others that are called to serve in different areas. Now, Romans chapter 16, let's have the verse 1 again. That sister there, what you call the minister, the word minister there, is the same word that is used for a deacon. And for those who had issues with women ministry, now, they struggle with this text. They say, well, um, she's just recognized as, um, as one that ministered, but that does not mean that there should be a woman minister. And you know that uh, the Southern Baptist Convention, I hope just to remind you, that uh, for many years, they were not ordaining women into the king's ministry. I'm not talking about pastoral ministry. They were not ordaining them into the king's ministry. They believe that when it comes to service, it's men and men and men. Thank God for Nigerian Baptist Convention that we began to move away from that kind of narrow-mindedness. And we began to ordain you know, women as pastors. And then we're also ordaining, you know, women as deaconess, you know, much earlier. So, there in that text, that woman was a deaconess. And Apostle Paul took time to say, the church in Rome, please help me appreciate this woman. She served, she ministered, she supported the ministry of the apostles. And you know, in Acts chapter 6, that we took some time to study and to, you know, go through while we're preparing for the election of another set of deacons. You know, in verse 1 to 7, we saw how God set some people apart to serve as helpers to the apostles. Helpers to the apostles. Romans chapter 16, verse 3. Let's look at Aquila and Priscilla. Now, if you see that from the King James Version, it said, they are my helpers. Can we read that together? It said, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my what? My helpers in Christ Jesus. Apostle Paul was saying, well, I'm an apostle. I've been sent forth to grow from place to place to proclaim the gospel, to plant churches. But there are those who are helping along. He said, greet them. Greet them. See, despite the varied engagements of these men and women, they accepted the call to serve. There were those who were thought about when the call was extended to them. Some did not accept the call. Why? Because they felt they were too busy. To take up the responsibility. Some felt, oh, I think I still need some time to tidy up some things. But for this one, they accepted the call to serve. What do we say to them? Thank you. The second reason why we need to thank them is because not only are we to thank them for their calling, we should also thank them for their consecration. Consecration. It's one thing to accept the call to serve as God's servant in a higher capacity is yet another thing to set your life apart for that service. 
to be consecrated for that service. To honor the Lord with your life. Consecration is honoring the Lord, living your life to honor God. Not just serving God, but to say, Lord, I want to serve you with my life, with my character. I don't just want to be someone that will be out there serving when my character negates what I'm doing. Not too long ago, I someone called me and wanted me to help intervene over a deacon in a particular local church. I've been serving, but unfortunately, that deacon didn't do well with his character. Impregnated someone. And it became a public matter. And, and to generalize his listening, because I had to say, this is what I'm asked to do. And I'm asked to also ask you to do something. But it was not something we could do. Because we have to stand for righteousness. Praise the Lord. We need to thank them that they consecrated themselves for this purpose. You know, Isaiah chapter 52, verse 11. Say, anyone who bears the vessel of the Lord, you must not touch the unclean thing. You need to be clean. And 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. The Bible says, the foundation of the Lord stands sure and has this seal on it. Anyone who named the name of the Lord, what should such a person do? Depart from iniquity. And so we are here today not only to thank these ones for their calling, but to thank them for their consecration. Bamoje. We never had a cause to say, well, sorry, uh, this is what the King Lagbaja did. Uh, so we need to ask him to step aside because he has done their no evil. But that has not happened and does not happen. So we need to say, what do we need to say to them? So we are saying thank you for your calling. We are saying thank you for your consecration. Number three. The Dickens ministry is not just bearing the title. We have been repeating that again and again. That the Dickens ministry is all about care. It's about care. The task of caring for the people. That the Dickens ministry is not about bearing title, but performing the task that is associated with the Dickens ministry. And these ones, they have shown care in so many ways. They have shown care through their personal life, their personal resources. They have shown care through the oversight function in various ministries that they headed. And you know that verse 2 of Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16 verse 2. You see the word Sokora there. It said that you receive her in the Lord as become a saint that she assists her in whatsoever business she had need of you. For she has been a succorer of many and of myself also. The word succorer there, a benefactor. The one that so many have benefited from. And Paul said, even also, I'm a benefactor, a beneficiary. Praise the Lord. And we want to thank you that you have shown care in so many ways. You know, so many things were done behind the scene. But you know that the COVID-19 came and what the Lord did through the Dickens ministry became very loud that could not be hidden. Praise the Lord. Even those who, as it were, could not be said that, said that, well, they didn't have what to eat because of COVID-19. But even care was extended to them because at the point it was like, <laughs> I need to take my own share. But they demonstrated all of this. And we want to appreciate God that the Lord used you to care for the people of God. And so what do we say to them for their care? Thank you. 
So we are saying thank you for your calling. Thank you for your consecration. Thank you for your care. Number four, why should we thank them? We need to thank them for their commitment. People who are called into the Dickens ministry, they are not idle people in their various fields. They are not. I remember one of them when in the first missionary journey and I invited him. I said, well, this is what we think. And the first thing is, the <laughs> pastor, you know I don't have time. And, but after a while, you know, he reconsidered it and accepted. But after he finished the first time, he came to me and said, Pastor, uh, I don't want to go for second time. I said, why? He said, you know, I'm you know, very busy having this, having that, and all of that. And he now said, I have set a time for myself to retire. And when I retire, I will come back. <laughs> In other words, when he retire from his active business, he will come back. I said, we don't need you at that time. We still need you now. And after persuasion, he accepted to go for the second time. In spite of his being very busy. Those of you that were there when he handled a particular seminar, he, you know, he told us that he was somewhere in another climb altogether, trying to attend to this, trying to attend to that. And some of you wouldn't know. That some of the church and conference that we're having, not all of them were in Nigeria as we're having a church and conference. I remember a particular one that at the church and conference was going on, one of them was to go and catch a flight, was already at the airport, and he needed to give a report. So that tells you that these people, they are busy, nonetheless. They have demonstrated total commitment to the work of the ministry. Look at verse 12 of Romans chapter 16. Talking about people that labored. It said, who labored in the Lord. It says, salute beloved persons which labored much in the Lord. Labored much in the Lord. There's a text that each time I come across it, I have to re-examine myself again and again. Acts chapter 15, verse 26. Look at how some people were described. Can we read it together? Men that have hazarded their lives for the name. They have hazarded their life. Risked their life. Laid their life on the line. A pastor gave his daughter you know, out in marriage and fixed yesterday as the wedding and asked that I should be the one to join the daughter and the husband. And when I heard about the thing that was going on, and I first sent him, you know, one of those things that I got. He said, but sir, I don't know how you are going to make it to, <laughs> but it's you that must do this joining. And even my driver, in the morning was nowhere to be found. <laughs> but I said, I've given my word. No matter what happens, I need to be on the road. If there are men that have started their lives, risk their life because they needed to serve. And how much more some of us, maybe because of protest, because of this, because of that. You know, sometimes I remember when I had to go back to Ibadan maybe a week after you know we were attacked on that road and someone said pastor you still pass through that road <laughs> I said I don't have a choice I have to go through that route <laughs> the other day I was going to Agoyewoye and my brother called me from outside the country and said uh, it appears you are on the road I said I'm on the road I'm always on the road he said he just had a report now that, uh, you know, the, I said, you are there in UK, you are hearing a report in Nigeria. He wanted to scare me, and I said, no, I'm already on the road. <laughs> I can't turn back. Praise the Lord. So these people, 
They have shown commitment because they believe that the work of the Lord should take precedence over all other commitments that they have. You know, sometimes our meetings run for hours, five to six hours. You know, during pandemic, it was like a weekly affair. You know, it have to be meeting, strategizing, doing all kinds of things. But these ones, they have shown excellent commitment all through the period of service. What should we say to them? What should we say to them? All right. How many have I given to you now? All right, four. Let me give you the last one. That we should say thank you to them for their calling. Thank you to them that they consecrated themselves. They set themselves apart to honor the Lord with their lives, with their services. And that these ones, they have also show care to the people of God. They demonstrated that yes, they were elected to care for the people. Not elected to bear titles. Not elected to bear titles. And they have also shown to their commitment that in spite of their engagements here and there, in spite of their business, that they have shown commitment. Dickin Asenua is not here today, but Professor Ayu Asenua is here. Her husband, many times, when we are having meetings, the time zone is different because he is in Canada and he will have to carry his jug of, uh, is it coffee now? <laughs> and sometimes he will tell us that, most actually during COVID, he said, I have to wake up maybe 2 a.m., 3 a.m. to join the meeting and all of that. Great commitment. And for that, we say thank you. He said he will join, he will join this service. And if he's joining this service, it means that he needs to wake up around 2 a.m., you know, to join the service. To join the service. And so finally, we should thank them for their contributions. They've contributed to making this church an excellent church in so many areas. What makes New Haiti Baptist Church to be regarded as the number one church in the association? The number one church in the conference? And then third church in the convention is because of their contributions. <laughs> Let me tell you just a few of them. That as God brought them to the ministry of the deacons in this church, the Lord have used them to put structure to some things that were not structured. Uh, those in the, the pastors, you know, you understand what I'm talking about. Good structure. And I think the staff know that uh, through their effort, there is a staff enhancement policy that can enhance staff to stock. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm talking about the pastors and the non-pastors of the church. We need to appreciate them for their contribution to world short planting. Very passionate people about short planting. Thank God that all the set of deacons we've been having, they are passionate about extending kingdom frontiers. Praise the Lord. Extending kingdom frontiers. I remember, you know, we had a church planting seminar here. And I didn't wait for the Akone meeting. I had to say from the pulpit, I said, we are planting this church, we are planting this church, we are planting that church. And we got to the Akone meeting, they applauded it. And, you know, those people handed over to them and they continue with the race. Please, let's say thank you to them. <laughs> that our church is becoming a force to be reckoned with when it comes to mission, when it comes to church planting. Because of their contribution. We need to appreciate them for their contribution in terms of investment. Investment. We had some properties that were acquired while they sat. Can I also tell you that they make contribution in the infrastructure of the church? How many of you know that our elevator is in place now? If you have ever tested it and you enter and it will tell you like this. 
Not only that, before they signed out, they also signed a check for the organ. We have been waiting for that organ for a long time. Church organ. They signed it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know the choir, you are excited about that. Much investment in multimedia. But you know, above all, God used them to promote peace and stability in the church. And for their various contributions, what do we say to them? What do we say to them? All right. See, appreciation is the application for more. I've had cause to say that again and again that service is the rent that you pay for the space you occupy. You know that in this church we said Dickens don't retire. You only rotate out. And that means that service continues as long as you have breath. Because service is the rent that you pay for the space you are occupying here or now. Those who are gone they can no longer serve God. But as long as you are here, we are giving you a charge. This thank you is also a challenge. You know, appreciation is the application for more. We are demanding more from you. Maybe one or two of you may have to... Well, you know, we have a constitution. We are not applying. That constitution says, after you have rotated out for two years, you can come back. I pleaded with the king Gokola Zuko. He didn't come back. But thank God that the wife came and he supported her. Uh, but let me say that whether you come back to the Dickens ministry or not, service continues. So what we are doing today, as we're saying thank you, is an application for more. So thank you is the invitation to serve God in other capacities. And I know that the Lord will use you. For the glory and honor of his name. Rise up on your faith. We need to thank God for this one. Let's say Lord we thank you for these servants. That you have used. To minister to us. Four of them for eight years. One of them for four years. I appreciate God for the various things. That God did through them. I appreciate God. I appreciate God. Ask God to be their reward. Ask God to bless their families. Ask God to bless their endeavors in life. I also want you to pray for yourself and say, Lord, let my life also generate thank you. Let my service generate thank you. Lord, use me also to bring thanksgiving to you. To give, bring thanksgiving to you. I want you to also appreciate God if there's anything that the Lord have used this one to do in the course of their service. Appreciate God for that. Give him thanks. Magnify the name of the Lord. Ask the Lord to bless them. Shalabran Talia. Ask the Lord to reward them. 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 Thank you, Almighty Father. Glory be to your name. Even with a grateful heart give thanks to the holy one give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus. Oh yes. Let the poor say, and the poor say, I am free because of what the Lord has done for.
just go ahead and wave your hand to the Lord and say, Lord, thank you for all that you have done and for those who have rotated out. Say, Lord, thank you for all that you have done through me, through the gift, through the opportunity that you have given to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We give you thanks. Some of us, we give thanks to God as the choir sang. You thank God for what he has done for you. I want to mention those things again and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Because as you are thanking him, it's an application for more. It's an application for more. Application for more. Thank you. If you came here weak, declare now, strength is my portion. I receive strength. If you came here sick, declare I am here right now. I am here right now. Salabra talabadia. Lebro talabalia. Tell the Lord I will ever live to praise you. To give thanks to you. I will ever live to praise you. To give thanks to you. I will ever live to praise you. To give thanks to you. Lebra talabashatalia. I will ever live to praise you. And give thanks to you. Blessed be the holy name. Thank you, our Father. We give you glory. We give you praise. Be that we exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we say thank you for the King Wale Abegunde. We say thank you for the King Abiodun Oladilojo. We say thank you for the King Nesmumbo Olasoko. We say thank you for the King Soji Olasoko. We thank you for Dickin Dixon Asenua. We thank you for their family members. Thank you, O God, for their labor. Thank you for all that you have done through them. We return the glory to you. We return the honor to you. We lead them before you that you will be their reward. You will renew them for greater service. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will bless them, bless their endeavors, bless their families, and that Lord, you will give them long life to continue to serve you. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will be their inheritance. You will be their portion. Blessed be the holy name. For every one of us help us to live the life. That we offer thanks to you. To the glory and honor of your holy name. Thank you precious father. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Be seated.